hello, my paint by number enthusiast. Today we're gonna to talk about gesso, just gesso. So I'm always getting the same questions like daily. And I thought it would probably be just a really good thing for me to just go through everything you need to know about gesso. And this is clear gesso. Now there's a big difference between white and clear. White will cover up your numbers and your lines even if you thin it out, it can still be one of those things that you will struggle with. Now, white gesso is fine if you are using it on purpose to cover your lines and numbers. So if you don't have a white Sharpie paint pen that's water-based, or if you don't have white acrylic paint that's opaque, but you need to cover the number before you, you know, paint that section, white gesso is fine for that. I am going to gesso half of it and allow it to dry. And then I'm going to show you the difference between the texture, how the paint goes down, how much paint I need. I mean, it's, I'm gonna just try to give you a demonstration of why it works so well. But in the meantime, I'm gonna answer some of your questions as well. So let's start with what does it do? Well, first of all, it's designed to prime the surface. It adds a high level of tooth for color adhesion. So the color will actually stick to the canvas better once it's got the gesso on it. It also is going to give you a transparent matte finish, which will allow you to um, see your canvas through it. So you will still see the texture of your canvas, but you will not have to worry about the paint going down in the little cracks and leaving white spaces and all that. So the other important thing is that it's long lasting and it is archival. So it's got an archival base to it. So it's gonna be safe for helping you keep your painting intact and preserved over the years. So why do we need it? Well, it makes the paint cover better with one coat. So that is the ultimate reason for this. It is going to help your paint adhere to the canvas. It is gonna give us a very gritty texture. It's a, like a sandpaper texture once we paint this on. And that is what grips the paint when you're, when you're laying down your paint on your canvas. To answer the questions about how you apply the gesso, what I do is I have had this paintbrush from some other craft for so long and it's a two inch brush and it just works well to cover the surface and um, even though sometimes it does give me stroke marks if I'd lightly go over the top after I've applied then it will remove the stroke marks so this is just a you know inexpensive two inch brush that I already had on hand but you'll notice in the description below you will see the two inch brush that I have linked you to on Amazon. So this is what I use to apply. And then I'm just gonna take a little, some kind of plate or bowl or something. And I'm gonna pour my gesso on it. And then I'm gonna apply it to this side. Because my tape is packed up, I'm not able to tape this canvas down to my board before I gesso. And so I'm kind of holding it down with like my camera mount, my paints and I'm trying, I'm hoping it's not going to buckle up or anything once I put this on there. Usually what I do is I just tape down at least two sides to my sketch board and then I will gesso it and I will leave it there until it dries. And that way it doesn't get any kind of rippling or bubbling or anything like that. So it looks like I'm using a lot. This is why I am, um, buying a larger bottle now than I used to. This is the 16 ounce bottle, but next time I'm getting the 32 ounce bottle because I do gesso my canvases. When they first come in, I try to go ahead and just gesso a couple at a time. And, um, and so that's what I've been doing, which is making me go through it a little faster. Now I'm gonna start laying it down and bringing it over to the center. Just dipping in, I'm not trying to take care as to just getting a little at a time, but you will notice I'm getting a very thin layer. Now I will go in this direction first. 
and then I will switch it up and come in this direction. Now I wanna mention while I'm doing this, that this gesso from Liquitex is non-yellowing and it's permanent, but it also is water resistant. So it does give you a level of protection that you will need. Now I'm gonna have a lot of wasted gesso here. Um, so let's go ahead, I'm gonna go ahead and use what I've got. I could put that back in the bottle, but what I'll do is just go ahead and do a little bit further, because I know I'm gonna be gessoing the rest of this canvas later, but I don't wanna waste this. So I'm gonna go ahead and do it this way. Now, now that I've got that done, if I wanna kind of scoop this out and put it back in my bottle, that's what I will do. In fact, I will do that now. So now what I'm gonna do is just lightly take my brush over the top. Like I'm not applying pressure, I'm just dragging it over. And that is getting rid of all of those brush marks that I left earlier. And you'll notice they will just disappear. Once I've got that done, I will, I will do the same thing vertically. Okay, so half of our canvas is now gessoed. Now I'm gonna go immediately to wash my brush out. And if I had a bowl or something like that, that was a, you know, like a ceramic bowl or something, I will go ahead and wash it out now too. Now there's a lot of questions about how long this has to set. And there's a lot of, not controversy, because controversy sounds negative, but there's a lot of different opinions about that. What I have done is there's been times where I have just done all my canvases and left them alone because I'm working on another piece. And so I have the opportunity to just leave my canvases out to cure. Technically it says leave it for 24 hours to cure. I take a blow dryer and I will actually just set the gesso and make sure it is completely dry, that it's not cool to the touch anywhere and, and so a lot of times I'm painting on mine a lot sooner than I probably should. I recommend that you do the 24 hours because that is what it calls for. But I've also been told that oil paintings are the ones that really need to cure. If you're gonna put oil over this, you would really need it to cure for 24 hours. But since it's acrylic, it's a different type of paint, a different consistency that it doesn't need to cure as long. I'm going to leave that up to you as to how long you wanna leave it. But I, like I said, I kinda of expedite mine to dry a little quicker so that I can work on it for like videos and stuff like that. A lot of times I will do it just because I have to record and I don't wanna wait till tomorrow to finish my video. Now as it's drying, I'm noticing a little bit of texture, you know, brush stroke. So I'm good, I got all those smoothed out and this is ready to, paint on once it is completely dry. While it is drying, let's discuss sanding. So I get this question, I'm not kidding you, at least once a day, if not more often. Do I need to sand? Okay, here's my thinking on this. No, I painted this on here because I want the gritty texture. Because it's not dry, I can't give you an example of what it sounds like. I will after it dries. But you do not sand in between layers. Now the other question I get is how many coats do I need? How many layers do I need to put down? It all depends on your canvas and how smooth it is. And the reason I say that is I just kind of play it by ear. Like some of them I will only have to do one layer and some of them I will do two layers. Once it dries, I will be able to check it and see if the texture is toothy enough for me to, with just one coat. If it's not, then I will add another coat and allow that to dry and then come back and paint it. So you do not sand in between because if you sand, then you're losing the purpose of doing it to begin with. The other question that I get all the time is, I have already started painting and I just found your videos and I heard about clear gesso. Is it too late for me to put the clear gesso on there? And I have an entire video 
that will demonstrate that exact question just by itself. It's just a simple video. But while I have you here and we're discussing gesso, let me go ahead and answer it. And then I will send you over to that video to watch that so you can see visually how that works. If you're new and you just started your first or second or third paint by number and you watch my video and you're like, oh no, I needed to add clear gesso. And you're, you know, part of the way through your painting, add the clear gesso. It's gonna dry completely clear. And I have that video to demonstrate. So my, my recommendation is this. I wouldn't intentionally paint some and then go over it with clear gesso. But if you've already started a painting and you find out about clear gesso, then yes, go ahead and put a layer of clear gesso over it. That's what I do and I've been fine with that and I've been happy with it. It hasn't shown any difference between what I'd already painted before the gesso and what I painted after the gesso. So I don't see any difference at all, but I don't make a habit of that either. Okay, so I have allowed this to dry and I am back to test our paints on each side. This is the gessoed side. This is the ungessoed side. You can hear, now this is just one coat. Once I paint this, I will know if I need to add another coat. Um, that's how I do it. I kind of play it by ear and I make that decision after I've started and see you know what I think. Now, no flow aid has been added to any of these paints, so I am gonna go ahead and do that. Okay, so I've got my paint to the right consistency by adding some flow aid to it. It's nice and creamy. So I'm just going to start over here and paint. I know you're gonna ask about the brushes I'm using. I have just done a video on these brushes so it is being uploaded and you'll probably see it before you actually see this video so I will link you to the brushes they're also on my blog and my latest post about the tools that I like to use paint a little more on the gesso side and I want it to dry and maybe even take a picture so that you can see it very closely the white is not going to show through this gesso side as much as it will on this non gesso side So with the gessoed side, I wasn't really having to go over my strokes over and over again like I am over here. You will tend to use more paint on the non-gessoed side because you're having to go back and fill in where the little white dips of canvas are. This gesso fills in the little dips of canvas. So normally you would have a texture like this if you didn't gesso. When you add clear gesso, you get a texture like this. So it smooths everything out, it fills in the little cracks, and gives you a solid surface. This has the little cracks in it, and it's already drying, and I can already see all of the little white canvas texture there. So next, let's try a little bit more transparent color. So I think I will go ahead and try number five because it's yellow and it's probably going to be very transparent. It actually might not be because it's got so much white in it, but we're gonna try it. Let's go in with a little bit smaller brush. Now, sometimes I'll wake up and these brushes are super frayed and I will take them to my cosmetic wipe and just roll them and it reshapes them perfectly. Now I'm gonna use what's in the lid a little bit, so I don't I don't want this part drying in the lid, so I wanna make sure I've got some Flow Aid mixed with it. If I can't get it down in here, then I wanna mix a little Flow Aid in this so I can use it. All right, so let's go in. Now, our gesso is right here, so let's go ahead and paint that.
That was a beautiful yellow, you guys. I don't know how it's gonna cover that number. I haven't gessoed this side yet, so it probably would if I had um, gessoed already. So, after inspecting our painted section here, and like I said, I will insert a photo of, the, of this side and that side right here so that you can see what I'm talking about. But the yellow covered nicely, except that you can still see the canvas divots. On this side, it's just smooth. On this side, it's like little holes and little gaps. So what that means is I'm gonna be using way more paint on a non-gessoed canvas than I am if I put it on a gessoed canvas. It's also going to be more translucent on a non-gessoed canvas than it is on a gessoed canvas. That will hopefully explain the reason that I gesso my canvas. Now I'm gonna try number 18 real quick just to see if it's a little more noticeable when I take a picture. My gesso is here on this side, not on this side. So we're gonna paint a little bit of this. So I'm using the, um, the number one from that detail brush set that I've discussed recently. Okay, so this is gonna be the best visual example. I'm gonna take a picture and insert it right here. And show you the difference between the gessoed and the non-gessoed side when you're painting. And you will see why you are saving so much paint because you're not having to go over it with a second coat. This is a beautiful opaque color. And if you don't gesso, then you still may have to do two layers when normally with the gesso side, you only have to do one layer. I hope this explained everything to you guys about why we're gonna use clear gesso to prime our canvas before we start so that you can feel more confident about the why, the when, the how, the, you know, all of that. All right, you guys have a wonderful day. Thank you as always for coming to see me and um, make sure you subscribe and like and share and turn on your notifications on for YouTube so that you'll be notified of my videos. Thank you as always for watching.